and we are live. So <laughs> Hi everyone, can everybody hear and see me okay? If you can, as usual, please leave a comment. <laughs> Hi everyone. Just double checking that people can see us okay. Okay. If you can see me, please leave a comment. I can't see them coming in yet. Yeah. Okay. 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 The comments are coming in. They can see us. Sometimes this is delayed, especially since it's like a third party streaming app for YouTube. So sometimes the comments can come in delayed. Okay. Thank you very much everyone for joining today. As always, it's so nice. So, so nice to have you guys here, especially when we come on live and we have guests to bring information to you. Okay. The comments are coming in. People can see us. Okay. Well, thank you everyone. Like I said, for joining us, it's always such a pleasure to have you guys here live. Um, Today's conversation, I thought it was very necessary for us to have this chat, just given the situation of the interest rates in Canada right now. So this is very timely. And um, I am joined today by Amy Ding from Requity Homes. And in a minute, I will turn it over to Amy to do an introduction of herself, and then we can get the conversation started. But before we get into that, as always, I always like to know where you guys are watching from. So if you please leave in the comments where you're watching me from, just leave that so I can say what Welcome to people. I see the comments pouring in now. Well, thank you. Thank you guys so much. So Tam Tamete Dawari Briggs, thank you. Fumi Afelomo, thank you very much for joining. Abibat, Babatunde, Rebecca, Daniela, I see all your comments coming in. Thank you so much for joining. Madga from Ghana, thank you very much. From Nigeria, thank you. From Winnipeg, from Calgary, okay. From Lagos, okay, I see all of you. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just gonna give one more minute for a couple of more people to join us and then we can go from, from Calgary, another Calgary. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. It's always so nice when I can connect with you guys live. <laughs> okay, just check in. Chaya Day, welcome, or Chia Day. Allow me from Winnipeg. Thank you for joining. Thank you guys so much. From Florence, Ontario. Wow. Watching from Halifax. Wow. From Musjo. Thank you. From Ghana. Welcome, St. Catherine, Ontario. Okay. We have a ni nice spread here across Canada. Why my Saskatoon peeps? I don't see you guys yet. Come on, let the comments come in. <laughs> I My Saskatoon that. squad, where are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> it's always so nice to do this. And then some people get a bit competitive and want to outdo the others. So it's always so much fun to sit back and watch this. <laughs> okay. Um, so while we're waiting or letting other people join in, Amy, I'm just going to turn it over to you to do like a, a, a brief introduction. Who is Amy? What is Requity Homes? And uh, we can get a conversation started from there. Sounds good. And thank you so much, Marina, for having me here. And nice to meet you all. Um, we have very diverse <laughs> representation from all the cities in Canada and also the world. Um, uh, my name is Amy. I'm the founder and CEO of Rockwoody Homes. So at Rockwoody Homes, we're creating a new path to homeownership to help transition renters um, from renting to owning a home through a modernized rent home program. So specifically about myself, I've spent my entire career in the real estate space. So I used to be accountant auditing real estate companies working finance and also venture capital slash product at RBC Ventures, which is the venture arm affiliated with Royal Bank of Canada, which is the largest bank in Canada. So through my time in my professional career, I saw a lot of innovative home models in the U.S. Then when I look at Canada, there wasn't much going on. So I took that as a sign. It's my time to change that. And that's why I decided to quit my corporate job back in 2020 
right before the COVID and started Rockwoody Homes with the mission to make homeownership more accessible in Canada. Um, I'll be more than happy to dive deeper into the Rockwoody Homes Rent Home Program, specifically later on with Marina, but that is just a quick high-level overview who I am, why I quit my corporate job and started Rockwoody Homes. That's amazing, like to to see a need and then go just go right after it to provide solutions to people. Very, very noble. Um, so so tell us a little more about the rent own program. Let's start with that. Like mm -hmm. if there are other options that Recruity Homes offers to like clients, but it seems like the rent to own option is the more popular one that I've heard about or read about. So do you want to tell us a little more about the rent to own program that um, Recruity Homes has going? Yeah, so I'll give you very high level, like how the rent um, works. As the name suggests, you basically start as a renter until you can qualify for a mortgage. So the background uh, behind this rental is there are a lot of Canadians um, that they do have the cash flow to afford a home, but they still cannot qualify for a mortgage. And that includes a lot of newcomers like myself. When I moved here 10 years ago, it's impossible to get a mortgage. Forget about mortgage. It's impossible to get a credit card. I give bank $2,000 cash. I'm like, give me a $2,000 credit card. There's nothing for you to lose. They wouldn't give me anything. So it's very challenging for newcomers, self-employed individuals, families with fair credit score to qualify for mortgage. So what we do is we want to give them that stepping stone. And exact specifically how the rent home works is as a company, we'll help those families purchase the home of their choice up front essentially become the landlords. And then when they when those our clients rent the home from us on a monthly basis, we'll work with them to help them save more towards a down payment. We help them uh, with budget coaching, credit coaching, so they can establish Canadian credit history for newcomers or or families with a correct credit score improve their credit score with the end goal of that eventually they will become mortgage ready so they can buy back the home from us, the landlord, at a predetermined price both parties agreed upon initially. That is very high level how that works. I always like use the analogy like lease to own a car. So in Canada, US, you can go to any car dealerships. There are three ways for you to access a car. You can buy it in cash, you can finance it with a vehicle loan, or you can lease the car mm -hmm. on a fixed monthly payment. Then at the end of the you can decide whether you want to buy out the car or not. So if we think about it, why can't we make that happen for a home purchase? Knowing number one, mm -hmm. homes cost a lot more money. So there should be yeah. more financing options available. Um, secondly, homes appreciate, real estate generally is appreciating asset class. What that means is over time, the home value goes up, not like the vehicle, home value goes down. So it's actually beneficial. Yeah. Yeah for the user, like rental clients, to lock in that future buyback price at a certain level because they might be able to buy back the same home down the line at below future market value through this kind of rental mechanism. Okay. Uh, so you did talk about credit to say that there's coaching to get people to improve their credit score or build their credit score. Does that mean that to get into the rent to own program, um, the Pre current credit score is not a factor. Or how do you determine who's eligible to get into the rent to own program? Great question. So what we do in our like underwriting, uh, we look at cash flow. So credit score, we don't care too much about, oh, do you have a credit score? Because sometimes if you're new to the country, you just have, you don't have a credit score. It doesn't mean you have bad yeah, credit yeah. score, right? So we don't care about the credit score itself. In paper, we said minimum credit score of 500. But if you're a newcomer, you don't have any credit, um, Canadian credit history or score, that's no issue at all. So our underwriting looks at your underlying cash flow. So there are two things we're trying to assess during the application stage. Number one, could our clients afford the monthly rent home payments? If they can't afford it, we don't think it's responsible to put them through that program. It depends on yes, they can afford it from the cash flow perspective. They have enough cash in, their expenses is manageable, they can totally afford it. Then the second question is, can we help them eventually get ready for mortgage in let's say three years time frame? And if the answer is yes, they're perfect. They have the cash flow. We can work with them to qualify for traditional mortgage over the next three years. Then let's buy the house for them up front. And so they can move in today, enjoy the home, make it their own. And uh, when the time comes to it, they are eligible for a traditional mortgage. They just exercise the option and buy, buy back the home from us. Wow. 
Um, that's that's very. I'm I'm thinking about it like it's like you're already paying mortgage, except that the house is not in your name until your credit score is high enough for you to buy it. Is that is that what I hear you say? Uh, yeah. So I do want to clarify. Like we're not a mortgage company. We're not a lender. We do get asked a lot. Oh, mm -hmm. how much interest rate do you guys charge? So I just want to be super clear. When it comes to interest rate, it's like only a lender. Someone give you money and you had to pay them back plus certain interest, right? That's how the lending works. Mm -hmm. And that's how traditional mortgage works. You buy a house, it's in your name, you go to the bank, you borrow whatever money, pay the bank, yeah. whatever interest expense. But keep in mind, we're not a land, like we're not a lender or mortgage broker. Instead, we become your landlord because we buy the house up front. It's in our name. And what that means to the client is every month, the monthly payment you pay us includes two components. You pay us rent. If you rent a similar hall in the area, how much rent you had to pay, it's exactly the same, market rent. Mm -hmm. In addition, you do pay a premium over the market rent. That premium goes towards the down payment because the idea of rental is I want to help you right. save more because start rental, you only need a minimum 2% uh, versus traditional mortgage, 5, 10, 20. So in this case, we do need to help you save more to eventually qualify for mortgage. So And, and it would be easier to save consistently every single month because uh, in no time, in a very short period of time, you realize, the, oh, I already have this much saved up. So that's kind of how that works from the um, the renter consumer side, you'll pay us fixed monthly payment, like rent plus extra money that help you build up your down payments. And there's no interest. Mm -hmm. There's no like dad, you don't have to worry about, oh, you know, is this, what if I can, you know, what if I can fulfill the mortgage payment? Because we're actually become the landlord, give you the actual flexibility and also extra time to eventually become a homeowner. Great. So what does this cost if I were interested in getting into the rent own program? I don't qualify for a traditional mortgage right now. I can't afford the down five percent down payment on the home that I really want. And I come to you, Amy. What does it cost me to get into this program? Yeah. So there's no like cost in terms of application fee, like you had to give us any money to start the application. It's completely free. Everyone can go to our website and get pre-approved and eventually fully approved through our online application portal. It's very self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. And from the consumer perspective, a lot of times they what's like, how do you guys make money? Like, how does this work? Right. So just keep in mind, we do ask you to provide an initial down payment. Once you find a home you want us to purchase, but that initial deposit or down payment, it count as your own down payment when you buy back the home from us. I'll give you real life example, simple. Let's see, Marina, you find a house that's worth $250,000 today. You want us to buy it. We say, hey, we need $5,000, which is 2% of down payment from you because we want to make sure, you know, our interests align. Um, you know, when I buy the home for you tomorrow, you're not going to walk away the next day. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how it works. But that $5,000 is not actual fee. That $5,000 goes towards your down payment once you're ready to buy back the home. And then every month you pay us rent plus extra, let's say $400 um, that goes towards a down payment. So both the extra premium plus the initial $5,000 deposit, all of that count as your down payment, which mm -hmm. will be credit towards the final buyback price and right now in the markets we operate we use roughly five percent increase per year so we'll sell the home to you you know if it's 200k we'll sell to 210 one year 220 year two 230 in year three even if the home price is worth more than that um so from consumer perspective there's no extra fee because you had to pay rent regardless mm -hmm. if you rent a home and everything you pay the premium the up deposit all goes towards your own down payment so there's no extra cost from the consumer perspective Okay, so for the extra premium that um, the the clients can pay on top of the rent, mm -hmm. is that a predetermined fee? Or if I got like a lump sum bonus from work and I decided I wanted to throw all of that into the premium, is that option available or is it already fixed? So usually we try to determine that savings number ahead of time and we try to keep it consistent. Okay. How we do it is hypothetical in the same example you started with 5,000, right? You're saying, hey, by the end mm -hmm. of the program, I want to be able to save, let's say, $15,000 because that's the minimum I needed to qualify for mortgage. Then we know, okay, you need to save another 10K because 15K minus 5K, that's the 10K you had to save through the program. Then we say, you need to save 10,000, three years, 36 months, how much do you have to put on the side consistently every single month? So that's how we determine that monthly saving amount. 
in the example you mentioned, mm-hmm. it happens where our clients may have additional bonuses, right? In those cases, the reality mm-hmm. is even though our standard program is um, three year, but you don't have to wait until year three. For example, Marina, uh, 12 months into the program, you got a bonus. Your, you know, your business is doing extremely well. You had extra cash flow. You have extra savings. You can qualify for mortgage. Just buy back home at that time. You buy back home at a cheaper price. And uh, the moment you are able to get a mortgage, because now you have all the down payment, just try to buy back the home from us. Title transfer to you will be out of the picture. And afterwards, you don't have to pay rent. You just pay for your mortgages. So that is kind of the program works. Yes, if you have additional money, you can give it to us, but we don't recommend you to give it to us. We just say, hey, you have money. Why don't we work together to see if we can qualify for mortgage now rather than wait for another two years? Because the moment you are ready for mortgage, there's no point waiting waiting around. Just buy back at home as soon as you can. Okay. And, and Amy, earlier you talked about providing like financial coaching to, to the clients that come, like getting them um, mortgage ready, basically just financial coaching, budgeting. Can you tell us a little more about that? Like how, how does that really work? Like, do you have to be in the rent to own program to access those services? So is that something you offer as an additional um, service to clients if whether they're in the rent to own program or not? Yeah, uh, so we do offer this home ownership coaching program to anyone, everyone. So whoever you think you're gonna, you need any extra guidance or help understanding how the mortgage, how to buy a home in Canada, how to get ready for a mortgage, like to become a owner, you can you can you know mm-hmm. apply for a home ownership coaching program. It is paid. It's forty nine dollar monthly subscription fee, generally six month long. However, all of those money is fully refundable. At the end of the coaching program, if our if the clients enter and um, become our rental clients, or even better, they can buy a home on their own with a traditional mortgage by working with one of partner real estate agents or mortgage broker. So, in addition to give them all the money refund like back to them, we actually give them an extra three hundred five hundred dollar bonus depends on the home price range they're looking for, uh, just to help them you know get a little bit uh, a head start in terms of becoming homeowner. And, and for our specific rents on clients, i.e. people, we already bought a home for them. We offer this homeownership coaching program for free. And specifically what will be touched or included in that coaching program, there are a lot of components to it. It's very personalized. Usually we start with a budget coaching. What that means is we have an expert who will do two sessions with our clients to understand their current cash flow. And they will come out with a very personalized budget plan that's paycheck by paycheck. So if you follow that plan, you should be able to reach all your savings goal and all your other goals you have in your life. In addition, we have the credit coaching, like explaining to you how the credit score works why you see different scores um, by using different apps and give you very actionable items and that is very that is tailored towards their own uh, situation in addition to that there's mortgage 101 things you need to know at first time home buyer what government uh, assistance programs available what tax incentives available to help you become owner including the newly initiated first time home buyer savings plan which is kind of equivalent to mm-hmm. RSP, TFSA, uh, Register Retirement Saving Plan, Tax-Free Savings Account, where Canadians can now put in money in a separate account specifically to buy a home as a down payment while you get all the tax deductions. So we base, our goal is to handhold our clients until they can become a homeowner and provide personalized uh, guidance along the way. Okay. Um, and one other thing about credits that I remembered you mentioned, like you coach the people, coach the clients, the rent then helps them build credit. So does the payment of rent, is that does that get reported to like the credit bureau so it affects the credit score? Yes, absolutely. Yes. So uh, we actually report the rent payments to the credit bureau to help our clients um, build up their credit history or improve their credit. And um, I know some of the um, some of the audience might not from Canada. So I'll just give you a little bit of context here. Rent is probably, I would say, one of the biggest expenses most Canadians incur on a monthly recurring basis. Yet, that is not part of your credit score. So if you pay your rent on time, it doesn't get reflected on your credit score at all. So we think that's, that shouldn't be the case. Um, if you're paying your rent consistently, 
that should be part of your credit history. That should help you build up your credit score. So that's why we were able to um, report all the rent through a partnership with third parties um, to help our clients uh, improve that credit score by reporting the rent. But generally in Canada, if you just rent from traditional landlords, those rent payments are not part of your credit building history at all. Wow. And we do so it for this free. is another way. Wow. This is, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know that, that, that rent does not um, um, tie into credit score. Like that's, that's strange though. Like given how expensive <laughs> that is today and then. It's just getting more difficult for people to even qualify for traditional mortgage, given the, the craziness that is going on with the interest rate right now. So you would think that for something as expensive as rent, that should be like the biggest component that ties into the credit score, given that everybody pays their rent anyway. So so that's really good to know. Yeah. Um, a couple of questions are coming in. I'm just going to show this. Mm -hmm. Can you see the question, Amy? Yes, I can. Okay. So it's Okay, so does any part of the rent go in as down payment aside the set premium? Uh, right now, no. So how our program set it up is if the market rent is $2,000, you had to pay us $2,000, that $2,000 goes towards rent. None of that $2,000 goes towards the down payment. And there are certain... Um, there are certain kind of policy behind the scene. Um, once the time comes to it, the clients need to qualify for mortgage. They had to show the down payment um, according to certain lending partner policy. Only the premium over market rent can be count as a down payment. So even if hypothetically, we design a program where you know what, one hundred out of that two thousand can be counted as down payment. But by the time it comes to the mortgage application, there are certain policy in place. Only the premium over the market rent can be recognized as a down payment from the lending perspective. Okay. So another question. Is there a way? So this is a way for a client to hold down a house they're interested in, but don't yet have all the funds available. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, I think that this is a definitely, um, it's definitely true. I would say I would add a little bit more color than hold down because it's not only you get to, you know, give yourself more time to be able to buy back the home, but you get to move in and live in that home right away. And there are a lot of benefits towards it, right? Because generally people don't want to move around. It costs a lot of money moving and a lot of hassle packing, unpacking. And if you have kids, right, you don't want to pull your kids from school, daycare centers, finding new, new, um, new schools for them. So being able to move into the home where you want to, you want to raise your family over the next five to ten years, it's very important. And that's why what we're trying to do, even though you might not qualify for mortgage right now, but it doesn't mean you don't get to live in that same dream home you wanted to own three years, four years down the line. Mm -hmm. And there's a follow-up question there. Um, that Does the rent stay the same yearly or is it adjusted on the basis of market conditions? So how the, again, that goes back to the Canadian, rent is fixed for 12 months and afterwards it will be adjusted based on the inflation and we never uh, increase the rent more than the recommended maximum guidelines and depends on the province because there's different provincial rent control guidelines and uh, in Ontario the government post that um, pu basically publish an increase that any landlord can do every single year in Saskatchewan there's no rent control and what we do is we just uh, index to inflation we never increase the rent more than the inflation Okay. Um, this question says, I th may, well, this person probably joined after you listed what the eligibility criteria is. But before you answer that, I wanted to tie it to another question that has just come in to say, can an international student benefit from this program? So while you're talking about eligibility, if you would just talk about who can enter into this program, like what does your status in Canada have to be for you to be eligible to join the rent to own program or access any of, of the other services that you offer? Yeah, thanks, Marina. And thanks, Re Rebecca, for the question. Uh, so for us, in terms of eligibility, like from the underwriting perspective, we look at the cash flow. We see, could the clients afford the rent on payment? Then we, deter we assess whether we will be able to help them to potentially get a mortgage in three years' time frame. If I give you a very specific list of criteria, generally our clients has to be at least one family member to be fully employed. 
because you do need the cash okay. inflow to make sure you can afford it. Our minimum household income requirement is $50,000 per year at the moment. And uh, we do have a minimum credit score of 500. That being said, if you're new to the country, you don't have a credit history, that is no issue at all. And uh, we do require minimum 2% down and $5,000 in those cases. Uh, also, um, we, we do require applicants to be um, not in an active consumer proposal of bankruptcy, because uh, for active consumer proposal of bankruptcy, it usually takes several years to fully discharge. And mm -hmm. afterwards, it would take you another two to three years. And our rent on term three years, it just it's it's not the best time to start it. But if anyone is fully discharged from those, no problem at all. So those are very high level kind of a criteria. But at the end of the day, you know, what we do is we really look deep down in terms of cash flow to see if this is the right decision for you. And mm -hmm. Marina, regarding a question, who are the perfect candidates for our program? So one thing, if you can qualify for a traditional mortgage, you don't need a rent sum. That's clear. <laughs> I want to be fully transparent. This is the only option if getting a traditional mortgage is not durable. Then this is a great uh, alternative way. And who would be those clients? Ideally, number one, newcomers. Um, as Marina, we mentioned before, when you're new to the country, you don't have the Canadian credit history. It's very challenging to access any kind of financial products. So this would be a great way for you to, um, you know, get one uh, one step in. So newcomers. Secondly, is self-employed individuals like those gig economy workers, like Uber drivers or skip the dishes and uh, uh, contractors or uh, small business owners. Generally, if you're self-employed, lenders require you to have two years operating history and you had to wait. Sometimes there's opportunity cost for waiting. But lastly, it's just families with fair credit score. Things may have happened in the past. Mm -hmm. Everything is fixed. But uh, their credit score hasn't reflected that yet because it does take a long time mm -hmm. to get the credit. And in those for those families, if you want an alternative like B lender, private lender, you need 20, 35 percent down. And not everyone has that kind of down payment. So those are the I would say the perfect candidates for our rent zone program. OK, so Amy, for for newcomers who are new in Canada, it's not it's not news that in, in number of newcomers come with a lot of cash right? Some people come with cash that's enough to afford down payment, but they don't have the credit history to get like the best interest rates. Would this program benefit people like that? Because I saw a question just come in to say, what if the newcomer has enough for down payment? Are there any other criteria that may prevent them from qualifying for this program? Would somebody like this just have to go straight to the bank? Or is there anything you can do for someone like that? So um, if someone just landed in Canada, they have enough, let's say, for the 2% down, we do need them to um, actually have a job, right? Because that's the mm -hmm. other thing. Where it's either you have a, um, a, a job where you have probation, that, is a, that shows you have the cash flow coming in. And I know sometimes if the clients have really sizable down payments, when I see sizable, not just like 2%, where, you know, even if they don't find a job in the next 12 months also, they still have enough to afford the rental payment, we might be able to make exception. So for us, credit okay. history, credit score is not as important as the ability to pay cash flow, to pay, to afford the payment. There are two ways to prove it. You have a job, you have income coming in, or if because you're new to the country, it does take some time to find a job, then you have relatively sizable savings to make sure you have enough time to find a job while also being able to afford the monthly rental payment. Okay. And I see a number of questions coming about the location, like where is your service available? Is it across all the provinces? Is it everywhere in Canada or particular provinces? Our end goes to do this national coast to coast. We're not there yet. <laughs> so right now we're focused on Northern Ontario, Saskatchewan and Alberta at the moment. And uh, we definitely do have other expansion plans coming up. Um, that being said, I don't want to say no to uh, people. That's where we focus on uh, that uh, if there are clients who are interested that's outside of the geography we currently focus on, sometimes we might be able to make exceptions as well. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so Northern Ontario, Saskatchewan, Alberta. So for those of you who are asking about Calgary, I see a number of questions coming in for Calgary. Yes. Um, Nova Scotia. Hmm. Amy. 
Not yet, but I strongly encourage you to apply because uh, at the end of the day, we want to help as many people as possible within, you know, within our uh, within our power. Mm-hmm. So there always uh, could potentially be exceptions being made. And just in those cases, we had to go extra, um, extra process trying to push for exception. Okay. So it does sound like the interest from particular places is what would drive what the exception would be. Correct. Okay. And, and one thing I do, I forgot to mention earlier, for now, we're focused on like more populated area with like fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand or more uh, uh, population. Mm-hmm. The reason for that, as a business, there's a risk our clients may walk away from the home because it's option, not obligation, and it's totally within mm-hmm. their rights to decide it to you know what I don't want to continue this program anymore. I'm just going to walk away. That's totally fine. And if they do walk away now, we had to sell the home in the open market. So that's why we prefer to uh, right now to offer this in more populated area. In the event where clients walk away, it will be still durable for us to sell the home in the open so, market um, so. relatively easily versus smaller market. If it takes us a year to sell it, then it's not going to work. Okay. Um you guys keep the questions coming. I'm, I'm loving the enthusiasm. When a client finally qualifies for mortgage and buys from you, what will be the prevailing interest rates? That is a great question. Uh, we don't know. I don't know because uh, it really depends on the clients, their own kind of a risk profile and also depends on the far future market condition, right? Someone, same, same person would have been able to get 2% mortgage rate a year ago and now it's six percent so we it really else it's uh it's completely out of our control it really comes down if this clients be able to get a mortgage or b lender and then what that future market condition interest rate environment is mm, okay and i think this is um uh, a bit of what you just spoke about when you say what if when you said um the client is not obligated like they can decide to pull out of a program and then this person is saying what happens if the person has a reason to move away from their present location so i find a new job and i have to move away from the rent to own property is it just walk away from it and then do they get like the premium back or how does that work if people pull out of a program yeah, so I'll explain to you the standard policy, then I'll tell you some nuances. So in yes, people can walk away at the end of the rent to own three-year term. That initial deposit plus the accumulated monthly savings that go towards that down payment, all of that is fully refundable, but there is a non-refundable transaction fee. So the rent they're paying, the market rent, you don't get that money back at all. Because if you rent a home, you had to pay that regardless. And you've been living in the home mm-hmm. for uh, whatever, three years, one year. Um, and in terms of non-refundable fee, right now, our policy is 5% of our original home price. And the reason we set it at 5% because we bought the home for our clients. If they decide to walk away, we had to incur 5% realtor fee to sell the home in the open market. And usually we incur another 3 to 4% legal fee, lawyer fee, closing costs when we bought a home, when we sell the home as well. So those are the reasons why there's a non-refundable fee. That being said, it's uh, for the clients, the worst case scenario, they're going to lose is 5% non-refundable fee of the original home price. And if the market goes down significantly, we take on all the unlimited downside risk. And the other thing is, you may even if you had to move, let's say, sometimes you can still buy back the home. Uh, I'll give you some examples. Uh, we actually have clients buying back the home already. And um, we started buying home in 2021. The first client, they, um, they bought back the home at roughly 50% discount. To the market value. Wow. We bought wow. a home for them for $190,000 in 2021. We sold the home to them at $209,000 roughly um, within pretty much a 15 month um, t- based two year program. And that home is worth uh, $300,000 in today's market. So obviously that's a really good for clients because they are buying at a discount. So similarly, if this happens in the future, people have to move, but you know you have already the uh, the cushion built it up in terms of the current market value versus the contractual buyback price you have. What ended up happening is you can still buy back the home. Just buy it, even if you don't need it. And then sell the home in the open market and take a profit. And then take that profit with you. Go to whatever location, country, cities you want to go. Um, one of the key components for the rental is something we, we say, is there anything we can do to help renters to benefit from rising home prices? Mm-hmm. We all know there is a huge um, wealth inequality between renter and homeowner. 
because homes appreciating as a class. So historically, if you're a renter, if the home price goes up, it doesn't matter. You're not going to benefit from it. But through our program, you can because I lock in my future buyback price. If price goes up much, much higher, guess what? You will actually benefit from it because you can buy back at below future market value and then potentially sell it for profit later as well. Absolutely. That, this makes so much sense. Um, Olumide has a question. Um, how does this work for a person who has a, an incorporation where all the income goes? So it does like, sound like um, an entrepreneur, like I'm guessing that's what that question is asking about when you said the requirement is for somebody to have an income. So if how does this apply to entrepreneurs? Like, if yeah. you want to speak about that? Yeah, um, that's why I said self-employed, like business owners, entrepreneurs, it's very difficult to get a mortgage. I have firsthand experience myself. Um, <laughs> how that works is uh, that's no problem at all. Um, if the uh, person applicant has a business and it's incorporated, we generally ask for proof that you actually own the business. Then we would see, okay, how much is your corporation, you know, in terms of profit, revenue, expenses, and we'll bake that into your income potentially. Because sometimes people declare salary, sometimes people declare dividends for different tax considerations. And that is no issue from us as long as you own the company and your company is uh, making good cash flow, we can figure out a way to attribute that cash flow to the applicant uh, and uh, make the numbers work. Mm -hmm. So this person is asking, which area in Saskatchewan? Yeah. That's any city that has about 50,000 people. Is that safe to say? <laughs> yeah, I, I say that's very safe to say. Yeah, Saskatoon, Regina, obviously the largest two cities. That being said, you know, we're also open to the others, Moostra, Prince Albert. Uh, uh, yeah, so as long as it's a relatively populated area, we'll be okay. Okay. Winifred is asking, how can I apply? So at the end of this video, there's going to be a Google form in the description box of this video that would that you can fill out to indicate your interest. They would ask you for like information about your contact information, your name, phone number, email address, and what you're interested in. So if you would just fill that out, um, Amy is going to get all of that information. We're trying to see how we can just coordinate everybody that's applying so that we don't have her get bombarded with so many things. So if you will just fill out that Google form, it's, I will include it in the description box of this video after the live stream. So yeah, take a look, maybe like 10 minutes after it's going to be right there. You can fill in all of your information. If there's any questions that you have, you can indicate it on that form and Amy is going to get all of that information. Okay. I'm just scrolling back to make sure I don't, I didn't miss any questions. Hmm. Amy, while I'm doing that, can you tell me a little about what your current client base looks like? Like, what are the kinds of people you see um, yeah. sign up for this rent to own program? Do you have like people who are fresh in Canada or do you have people who have been here a while? Like, what is the range of your client base? Yeah, um, while Marina does that, I oh sure I like share like real stories because it's always mm -hmm. good to listen to real six like real life stories. Um, one of the client I was actually made a reference to, their name is Maria Jose, and if you Google it, they they got featured as CBC News, Global Mail, all the different articles as well. So they were originally from Colombia. Uh, and then they immigrated to Sousa Marie, North Ontario um, in 2021. So what happened to them is the wife came in, study at Sioux College, and the husband came in an uh, open work permit. And mm -hmm. uh, at the time, when they first got to Canada, they don't have a Canadian credit history, so they can't qualify for mortgage. And, uh, and the husband, Jose, he works extremely hard. That's why I love, as a newcomer myself, I love newcomers because I really admire and respect how hardworking um, all of us are, including myself. <laughs> and he works 80 hours per week. He wow. makes great cash flow, like over, over $5,000 bringing every single month. Um, but they can't get a fine for mortgage. And we're not talking about big dollar amount. They're thinking about buying a home around $190,000. And uh, it's just, it's it's uh it's just not how the traditional mortgage underwriting works. So in that case, we bought the house for them for one hundred ninety thousand dollars in twenty twenty one. In fifteen months, they bought back the home from us. Fifteen months, and they bought it back home at a fifty percent discount to the current home value. Because during that period of time, the Susan Marie real estate market has gone like crazy. It went up like forty percent year over year. And for them, after they got here for fifteen months. 
both uh, Maria and Jose built up their Canadian credit history. We give them some tips, you know, getting credit cards, cell phone bills. When you have your credit card, making sure it's always uh, paid off completely. And because, you know, when you're a newcomer, your credit card limit is usually $500 to start. You know, you had to make mm -hmm. sure you don't wait until it's 500 paid it off. Paid it right away, making sure the utilization is less than 30%. Um, so they were able to buy back home in 15 months. So that's kind of one success story. The other success story is also is different. They're not newcomers, but they're business owners, entrepreneurs. They had a great um, income through their previous uh, profession, and they started a tourism business in Sault Ste. Marie, North Ontario as well in 2021. And as a new business owner, even though they have excellent credit, more than 700, no lenders willing to give them a chance because they just started business. There's no history. There's no income proven proof, nothing at all. So we bought and they actually found a private deal where they had to act on it literally in three days because otherwise the seller is going to list the home in the open market. So we made it happen. It's a 24 month and they bought back home in 24 months because now they have two years history. They're able to get a mortgage and uh, the home they bought it back is also at a significant discount. We bought the house originally for $260,000. We sold it back to them for just two eighty, dollars And now that home is worth close to four hundred dollars So they are very happy and we're happy. At the end of the day, this, is, this could be a win-win situation for everyone involved. Exactly. Like, especially given how quickly the prices of homes, homes are rising. And um, yeah, I, I think about I think about Saskatoon and how it was when I moved here like seven years ago. And I'm thinking like if I got into a rent to own program and held down a home for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I'm thinking like, what would a home be worth today? Like if I was buying it back for me, I would buy it back for me and buy another one because I'm going to make enough profit to be. <laughs> to be very rich on that, you know, so so I totally I totally see how this can be beneficial to somebody to lock down a price today um, in anticipation for when you can buy it back in the future. So it sounds like a win win to me, like everybody wins at the end of this. Yeah. One thing I do want to say, in order to be eligible for the program, you have to live in the home as principal residence. So uh, we actually get a calls occasionally from investors say, hey, this is great. I want to buy this home. You buy this for me. I'm going to rent it out. And then I will buy back whatever. Like, no, it doesn't work. Like our goal is to help Canadians become owners, not like investors. So mm -hmm. it's very clear you how to use a home as a principal residence. Okay. Yeah. So speaking about that, what kind of homes do, do people, um, what kind of homes would be eligible in this program? Like, do I just pick the home? right? And decide that this is the kind of house I like, whether it's a new build, whether it's an old house. If it's a kind of house that has like a secondary suite, can I get into the rental home program, get a secondary suite and then make rental income while I'm living there? Yeah. So yes to all of those questions. Now, first one, yes, you get to choose which home you want us to buy. Obviously we have a list of criteria where generally we buy freehold properties, it has to no. It, it has to be on municipal water, municipal sewage. So I not in the middle of nowhere, like acreage, and then it has to be in good condition, like no structural foundation issue. Because we want to make sure you don't want to buy a home with structural foundation issue. It's going to mm -hmm. cost a lot trying to fix it, like a mm -hmm. lot of headache. But we have some basic criteria in place. But other than that, you go out, you find the home you want us to purchase. And there are a lot more choices available because at the end of the day, I want you to be able to see yourself living in this home, potentially raise a five, family five years, 10 years down the line. So that's completely up to our clients to pick and choose which home. It could be new built. It could be older home. It could be a duplex. It could be just a standard single family home. Mm -hmm. And uh, secondly, what if the home has a secondary unit, let's say a basement, separate entrance, or it's a duplex? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can definitely do that. There are some nuances there, which I'm not going to get into detail because it's very specific. But generally how that works is, yes, we'll agree on a certain pricing. And yes, the rental clients can potentially benefit from the extra income. And there could be some kind of profit sharing in place where, you know, uh, as a tenant, um, maybe upper units, they can get X percentage of the revenue potentially from the secondary units. So um, there is another initiative we're working on, which I'm not going to share too details. It's called Host to Own, where okay. you can actually lift one part of a house and generate income through the other part. And we'll do a profit sharing together to help you bring down your monthly rental costs. Okay. 
So guys, if you're interested in signing up, this is the best time because host <laughs> to own is coming soon. Um, another question says, what determines the rental value? Would that be market rates? Yeah, basically in line with the market rates. Okay. If you have any other questions, guys, please keep that coming. If you haven't liked the video, please like it. Thank you. It helps the algorithm. It helps the visibility. So if you're enjoying this content, please do well to like it. If you have any other questions, please leave that. Um, I'm just scrolling to make sure I haven't missed anything. So Amy, I know that um, Recruity Homes got featured on CBC. Tell me more about that. Yeah, we have a lot more um, media inquiry, like inbound inquiries. Um, obviously, ownership is a very hot topic. And we mm -hmm. do have some really, really nice clients who are willing to go out of their comfort uh, comfort zone and speak to the media about their story with us. Um, like Maria Jose, Amanda Brad, they all, you know, they had a video on our website or talk to the media historically. Um, they benefit from the program and they wanted more people to hear about it. That's why they're open to uh, talking to the journalists, just making sure more Canadians are aware of the program. And obviously from our perspective, I think one thing is historically, if you think about it, either you're a renter or you're a homeowner. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in between, right? The line is pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty clear. Uh, that demarcation yeah. is clear. <laughs> yeah. And now we're thinking, you know, that line could get blur, blur further as their new honish model coming to play. Mm -hmm. However, the challenge whenever there's new model coming up is the uh, education. Because not everyone is aware of those, right? It does take time to educate the customers. Okay, how does this new model work? Is there any nuances here? So it does take, uh, you know, time and efforts trying to raise the awareness of the program among mm -hmm. our target audience. At the same time, educate them so they know exactly what is involved uh, mm -hmm. before they make any decisions. Okay. And this question, I think something similar came up before. Is it for PRs or for those people who have work permits can qualify? A hundred percent. Um, and I know, uh, I don't know if some of you guys know, uh, effective January 2023, Canada has a foreign buyer ban, which means if you're a PR, you're not affected. But mm -hmm. if you're on a work permit, um, what that, throughout the country, what that means is if you want to buy a house, now you had to pay foreign buyer tax. I believe it's like 25%. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Because sometimes it's even hard to get 20% down payment. On top of that, guess what? you got to pay a foreign buyer tax for 25%, right? So this could be a potential transitional stepping stone where you do the rental and we will buy the house for you and we become the landlord. And then you work on your PR application. And until you are eligible where you don't have to pay the foreign buyer tax, you can potentially buy back home from us. Mm hmm Will uh oh, okay, I like this question. It says, Will a PR who works outside Canada qualify? Well, it, I would say probably not, but I need a more color. The reason for that is if you live outside of Canada, you one of our principal uh criteria is you have to be living in the home as your principal residence, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. If you yeah. work outside of Canada, I don't know how you're going to be living in that home as your principal residence. And we can't do this for investors or so leave the home vacant. It just doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a couple of questions are coming in that you already addressed. So for those of you who were not here from the beginning, it might be beneficial for you to maybe after the live stream, watch the video from the beginning it is going to be um, on my YouTube channel. You can watch it from the beginning. A number of these questions that I see um, coming in now have already been addressed. Because somebody is saying, as a newcomer who just arrived a week ago, can I apply? I don't think mortgage is going to be your primary concern if you, if you arrived a week ago. Do you have a job? Like, <laughs> you know, Amy said it, that one of the eligibility is that you have to have a job. You have to have to show income stream, like cash flow. So, it's cold, Auntie. Get a get a. At this point, you're worried about getting the right jacket, make it, getting the right place to live, or just finding your foot and knowing where to get around. So don't put yourself under pressure. Oh, the person says she has a job. Okay, wow, one week, yes. amazing. Then you can apply. A hundred. Then you can apply. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> but but it might be helpful to watch watch it from the beginning because um Amy had listed all of the eligibility, all the criteria, and everything. So. You will get more information if you watch this from the start. Uh, moments with D. So, yes, you can apply. And how you qualify is at the end of this video, like I said, there will be a 
Google form in the description box in this video that you can fill in your details, your contact information, giving us permission for somebody from Recruity Homes to contact you and we can start the conversation from there, okay? Um, given the current market situation, let me show this so Amy can see it. Yep. Given the current market situation and price of a house at over $450,000 and above, will a person who earns $50,000 per annum still qualify? This is a great question. So um, just for everyone in you know, uh, context, I did mention our minimum household income requirements, 50K minimum. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, when you are making 50K per year, would we be able to help you rent a house for 450K, roughly nine times your income? Probably not. Mm -hmm. No, no. And because that's part of the, um, you know, how we're doing this, we need to know, okay, cash flow, right? In order to rent on for 50K, what's your monthly rent on payment? If uh, is your income enough? The reason we set 50K is there are homes, depends on geography. There are homes that's like 200K, 250K, 300K. So for each applicant, once you go through the flow, we'll give you a recommended home shopping budget based on your own cash, like income and debt expenses. So that 50K is just absolutely minimum because based on our knowledge of the um, the starter homes in the markets uh, for any, um, uh, in order to make it happen, you kind of have to have 50K. That being said, every uh, applicant will have their own recommended home shopping budget that will definitely mm -hmm. change depends on their condition, just like you getting a mortgage. Um, yeah. you know, even if you get a mortgage, you make XYZ income, you might get a mortgage for a, uh, for, uh, for a different amount versus someone makes a little bit different number of uh, different mm -hmm. income. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 50K, 450, uh, 50K income, 450K home? Mm, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I'm hearing you say, Amy, is this is still going to follow the convention like you were applying for a mortgage with a bank. They are still going to look at your income. They are still going to look at your debt to service ratio. Look at what is safe to lend to you depending on your family income, right? So it's not a case of rent. Um, Recruity Home is, is not here to give people million-dollar homes on a 100K salary. It's still going to follow those conventional checking methods to make sure that um, what you're asking for is well within what you can afford, given what your family income is and what your um, the cash flow is, correct? Uh, it is correct mm -hmm. in the sense where we do do very thorough underwriting that is focused on the cash flow. Mm -hmm. like we look at your income, we look at your expenses, we look at your historical rent payment history, we look at your savings, spending habit, and then give you a budget accordingly. Mm -hmm. So the idea of doing that underwriting is similar to getting a mortgage because lender will do underwriting. But the key difference for us is how do we underwrite you? Our underwriting is a lot more robust. So because mm -hmm. keep in mind, if I do the same thing as a, as a bank, my business is going to go like, there's no point because my clients yeah. don't get a mortgage for a reason. And my uh, underwriting has to be robust enough to reflect that. So for us, it's like we care a lot more about your cash inflow mm -hmm. and your income depends on your type of income. Sometimes uh, the lenders may recognize, may not recognize it. But for us, we have a little bit more flexibility in terms of, OK, as long as you have cash inflow, maybe you don't have two years, 24 months um, history, but that's OK. From ex based on your previous earning income potential, we know you will be able to get there and we can make exceptions in those cases. So long story short, okay. we do our underwriting, and but our underwriting is a lot more robust and flexible than the traditional lenders. Okay. Um, so I think this is the last question that we're going to be taking. It says, does it matter if your employment is not from a Canadian employer? I mean, given COVID, there are people who live in Canada, but their employers are in the U.S. or other countries. Like, is that going to be a limiting factor or, or it doesn't not at matter? All. It doesn't matter. As long as you're employed, as long as you can show the proof you are getting, you know, income from any employer mm -hmm. any anywhere in the world, that's no issue at all. Awesome. Wow, this has been amazing. Thank you guys so much for all of the questions. This has been a great conversation and very informative. Um, Amy, as we begin to wrap the conversation up, is there anything else you'd like to add um, as your closing comments in the for the session today? Yeah, well, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Marina, for having me here. My pleasure. And this is my first time doing a live interview as well. So thank you. Nice. And I couldn't tell. You're really like a pro. 
Thank you, and uh, and thank you, uh, everyone from the audience for listening in and asking all those uh, great intelligent questions. Um, if you guys have any questions, as Marina mentioned, there will be a form, Google form, towards the end of the um, session. Feel free to fill out the information, and then we, our team, will be able to in touch with you, just share more about how the program works, and explain to you uh, any questions that you may have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this last question just snuck in as you were speaking. So I'm going to um, take this as the... Oh, oh God, I showed the Thank wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I sign up for a home in a province and I have to move to another province, but I still want to be in the program, can I transfer as, as long as the new home is in the same price range? Yes, definitely. Um, you know, the new home doesn't have to be the same price range. Hypothetical, you are doing something in Saskatchewan, hypothetical, and you already saved XYZ down payment, and now you're moving to Alberta. And yes, um, we will just have to redo your, you know, um, underwriting again, just see maybe maybe your earnings has increased and now your budget is big, uh, is higher because it depends on the geography, their different price. Yes, it's totally possible to potentially transfer your cumulative savings from one property in one province to another property in another province. Okay. Is there a maximum time you can't rent and then you must buy the home? Your program so, is three years, you said. Yeah. So I was Have you ever had clients who needed more time than three years? Yeah, so our stand term, standard rent on term is three years, but you don't, you don't have to wait until year three. Whenever you qualify for mortgage, you buy back the home right away because we have clients doing 15 months, 24 months, 10 months, doesn't really matter. And what if you, Marina said you need a little bit more time, right? At the end of year three, hey, you know, for, things could happen. And as long as, you know, we've been good in terms of communicating and, uh, you know, we've been good tenant, we can potentially extend the term for another six months or 12 months. We're not going to extend it indefinitely because at the end of the day, I firmly believe three years is enough to help someone yeah. get ready for mortgage as long as you're willing yeah. to put in the time and efforts to change behavior and, uh, you know, make it happen. That being mm -hmm. said, I do understand things might happen. Yes, there's flexibility on our end, making sure, uh, you know, you have extra time if needed to to uh, to eventually become homeowner. The questions are pouring in, Amy. People don't want to go. <laughs> he says, this one says, if you subscribe to upgrade options like appliances, flooring in the home, would that be included in the cost of the house or how? Yeah, um, I I just want to, I think my understanding of the question is hypothetical, you know, um, there's appliances, flooring, including the home, but you want to do some upgrades yourself. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So generally, if those things are in work, working order, like appliances, flooring, like we won't be able to do this for you. So, but you can do it at your own cost. No problem at okay. all. Because if mm -hmm. they're working, right. And then you can add it in, doing all those, like put it in, we call sweat equity. Especially mm -hmm. um, some of the applicants are really handy. They do certain work and makes the home, you know, look nicer and potentially increase the value. And rest assured, as long as you buy back the home, you will benefit from all the upgrades. Because the price we're going yeah. upon, it's not going to change because you spend the money, you did all this hard work. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I feel like this question is related to the one that came before where it said, what if you're working outside of Canada? So I'm thinking about it from what if the primary... Um, the person who qualifies lives, works outside of Canada, but has family living in the house as their primary resident. Does that then make a difference or how does that work? It definitely makes a difference because our goal, like the reason we have that principal residence um, criteria is all is that I just want to make sure we're helping the right people. Right, people living in the mm -hmm. home, not people going to be renting out the home for investment purposes. In those cases, I understand sometimes, um, you know, certain family members might not be here, might not be in the country, might be working overseas. That's no issue at all, as long as they're actually people living in the home and they're affiliated. It's not just strangers. Okay. Well, that's the last question. This time is the last <laughs> question we're going to take. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Um, in another five minutes, that Google form is going to be in the description box. So fill out your information in there. If you have questions that are specific to your situation, it'd be great to contact Equity Homes and Amy will be on hand to answer whatever questions and to make sure that we're providing information that is beneficial to you and your peculiar situation. Okay? So in five minutes, that will be on there. You can fill out all the details and we can get this conversation started. Amy, thank you very much for coming here to educate us on this today. I learned a lot from this session, a lot of things I didn't already know about rent to own and who qualifies and all of the 
uh, eligibility requirements. It's so nice to to learn that and to know that this option is available for people who can't qualify for regular mortgage, considering how crazy the market and interest rates, rates are right now. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining. Um, until I come back to you in the next live session, it's Marina saying thank you and have an awesome day. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>